Well, everybody, good afternoon, good morning, good evening. I don't know, whatever the case may be, this is your old friend, Dr. Jeff Zarnick. Dr. C ringing in yet another Fire Tri Weekly edition of the Dr. C's Corner. Anyway, if you can come up with a better title and some better lighting, hit me up at j.zarnick at snhu.edu. Anyway, thanks for tuning in and thanks for subscribing. I'm getting a lot of great feedback on some of the topics or all the topics that I try to bring forth. We started these at the beginning of this pandemic to let everyone know that there's someone on the other side of the keyboard that really is here for you. So on behalf of your great faculty and your phenomenal advisors, welcome to yet another edition. And I hope you're doing well. And welcome to a new term for all the undergrad people. And welcome to Southern New Hampshire University Global if you are a new student. And I am your favorite associate dean, the dean of the criminal justice program here online in the social sciences team. Anyway, many of you want to become problem solvers. And many of them you already, many of you already are. If you're parents, your police officers, or wherever you are, you know that a primary responsibility and calling, as noble as it is, is to help other people which can be exhausting. I was a police officer for 23 years. I understand that my second career is very similar as a, as a teacher, a mentor, a guide, or whatever you want to call it, faculty supporter. It's a lot of work. And what that means is you really have to put it out there and care. But, you know, extended levels of empathy, sympathy, pity, support can drain you. And so we have to be aware of that. I think if you're aware of something, it doesn't make it as scary, okay, uh, as, or as bad as it may seem if you're feeling burnt out or apathetic towards others, which really for the problem solver person who's called to service, it's a very noble calling, that can be very distressing. So I've got a great article I'm going to pull some information from. It's just great, and I'm going to tell you who it was written by in a second here. I apologize for the delay. But anyway, I'll get back to the author in a moment. So hopefully I can scroll through this if it cooperates. And here we go. Okay. Yay. All right. So it's called What is Compassion Fatigue? And the author wrote this on October 5 of this year. Her name is Nicole, and I hope I say it right. It's P-A-J-E-R, Payer. Anyway, so this is uh, her recommendation on how to retain your sense of humanity, you are who you are, even if you're feeling burnt out, okay? So between all of this stuff, the global pandemic, a news cycle that is always just laden with stories of injustice, political division, natural disasters, we're pretty tired. I know I am, and I'm the first to admit it. It's a lot. It's a, You know, you come sliding in on a Friday afternoon going, what was that about? What was this week about? So parents, you know, a lot of you are you're trying to juggle work with your children, with child care. You're, wor you're always worrying about family members contracting COVID, and especially all these new variants that are bouncing around. Caretakers attending to sick patients. All the while, you're trying to make time for yourself, your own self-care. And it's not selfish to think of that. It's not. So no matter what your situation is, you're probably experiencing some form of dun -dun -dun -dun, apathy, right? And again, that is so converse to who we are. It's just, if we're service providers, caregivers, police officers, you know, whomever, mentors, human services workers, all that, and your students in the problem-solving discipline known as criminal justice, you know what I mean. You don't want to lose that, okay? And it can really take a hit. So according to a licensed clinical social worker in Chicago by the name of Hillary Schoninger, she said, since the pandemic, Individuals are coping with so many different forms of stress that might be activating a compassion, a part of them that they may not understand, which results in them feeling drained, overwhelmed, and depleted. Okay, this is known as compassion fatigue, which clinical psychologist Brian Wynn says, he's the chief uh, clinical officer of Journey, Journey Pure, a drug and alcohol rehabilitation center. He describes it as a decrease in your ability to empathize due to physical and mental exhaustion. So, some more information for you from Ray Sadoon, a London-based mental health and addiction recovery specialist with OK Rehab. He's been noticing a surge in compassion fatigue since the start of this pandemic. And he says, whether we watch the news religiously or not, we cannot escape hearing about COVID cases in our area and seeing the devastating impact on everyone around us. And he says this adds, this leads to its experience, you know, a lower level of empathy 
as you simply, your brain simply cannot cope with all this bad news. And you just say, when is it? Can we catch a break? Right? Additional signs may include avoiding all forms of media, right? Disconnecting, having frequent anxiety or panic attacks, and feeling distant from your friends and family. Working remote does not help, right? If you have to work remote, some of us can make that adjustment. If you're an extrovert, a people person, it can be very, very difficult to not have that physical, that social interaction where you can see facial expressions up close and personal and in three dimension. If you're experiencing any combination of these reactions, you may be suffering from compassion fatigue. Quote, however, you should always consult with your own health care provider for an exact diagnosis of any emerging physical or mental wellness concerns. While it may be human nature to feel guilty about not feeling as sad as you think you should about another person's situation, like, oh, gee whiz, I wish I could help. Uh, this is nothing to beat yourself up about. Okay, so don't feel bad if you're just not up to it. Compassion fatigue can be a sign that you're not taking care of your own mental and physical health and that you're headed for some form of burnout. So it's important to recognize when it may be occurring and to take some steps to work through this, okay? So here are some brief expert-backed tips on how to work through this thing called compassion fatigue. Number one, know that it's normal and that it's okay. It's common to feel guilty for having compassion fatigue and to even wonder if you have lost all ability to feel empathy, right? It is scary. I have felt it. There's no question about it. I have tremendous responsibilities to students and faculty and advising everyone. We have a lot of people working on behalf of our, our great learning experience here at SNA True Global. It takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of care, sympathy, trust, socialization, diagnosing problems, offering remedy, and it never seems to stop. That's the way it is. It's not complaining, but what can it lead to? Compassion fatigue, right? So it's typically a short-term problem that does not indicate, again, you're not a bad person. But he says, uh, according to Sadoon, he says, if we had a breakdown every time we heard bad news regarding COVID, we couldn't function. So our brains use this compassion fatigue as a coping mechanism, kind of shutting down. Number two, guess what? It's okay to say no, as guilt-ridden as we can feel, to admit it, constantly helping others can really start to hurt yourself. And that's explained by Helena Plater Zyberg, a co-founder and the CEO of the anonymous peer support network called Supporty. Uh, it's spelled S-U-P-P-O-R-T-I-Y. She explains that when you're overextended yourself by listening, donating time or resources and showing up for others, you may find yourself drained of energy or even growing cynical. And you don't want to feel that way. It's just like I said, it's not who we are, but it can happen. It creeps up on you. She says, your compassion has become fatigued. It's okay to admit it. So while you want to be there for everyone all the time, it's important to realize when you need to pull back to tend to your own personal needs. More to follow in the next edition in another week or so of Dr. C's Corner. So once again, on behalf of your great criminal justice faculty who care about you you know please understand that they bring so much to the table so much to the classroom because they want to give back pass the baton as caregivers providers etc uh, support personnel you name it and same thing with your advising people they're on your side as am i dr c hit subscribe if you like any feedback welcome any topics are welcome any um any advice on lighting i'll take those too <laughs> My email is j.czarnec at snhu.edu. Have a wonderful and safe week.